Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. The season finale of Pose, season two, episode 10, In My Heels. What did you think about this season finale? I'll give my review. That's all coming up next. the scene off with Blanca. She's in her empty home. All of her children are gone. They're making their own lives. They're developing themselves and she's finding a way to keep going and of course bringing in income. She's doing nails and we see that a customer is leaving and as that customer is leaving we can kind of see that she's not doing well under her eyes are a little dark and she's coughing and of course it is symptoms starting to show themselves and then we see at the corner of the room it is pray tell and he's giving her that look like he can tell she's ill but he's trying to save face and and smile and he looks at Blanca and she looks at him and she says well I don't think I have you down for an appointment and in a joking way he says well I heard you take walk-ins they reunite, they hug, and of course you can tell this is a physical I'm sorry without saying it, but they embrace and they tell each other that they miss each other and they shed some tears. They catch up and pray tell is basically telling her, look, I understand you're in an empty home and I understand that you're going through a lot right now, but you got to communicate with us. You're not coming to the ballroom. Blanca says, look, I'm not coming to the ballroom. I'm trying to make the best of what I have. The silver lining is that I don't owe rent to Frederica and I could just do things on my own. But pray tell says, when is the last time that you've been in the hospital? So the next scene that we show, unfortunately, Blanca, she is in the hospital and Pray Tell is speaking with her. And Blanca says, could you go in my bag and give me my notebook? And he gives her the notebook and he says, well, what is this? And Blanca explains that she's writing everything down for her will. Pray Tell is like, why are you thinking this way? You shouldn't think like that. But Blanca, of course, she's like, hey, basically I'm a realist. This is where it's going and I want everything to be specific specific about where it goes in the case of my passing and he proceeds to read it and her wardrobe and all of the the jewelry and things that she's had had that she has she wants to leave for angel and for damon she wants to leave certain things for poppy she wanted to leave something and pray tell was just like well, what is this and she said well that was the dog that we were gonna get this summer and pray tells has says hey you gotta give something real so let's just write this down and let's just get everything documented and so they do so pray tell starts to go through her contact list and says hey i know i'm here but i need to call everybody and let them know that you're in the hospital keep in mind it is the year 1991 years after season one and when it began so it has been several years so you can get an idea of the timeline of how long we've been introduced to our characters once again I've always says that this said that this is foreshadowing to a lot of things, understanding that we've watched characters go through an entire journey. I do think that we'll lose a few here and there, but I let me let me keep going. So people start to show up, you know, we have the house of some house some individuals from the house of Wintour show up we have miss electra and she says hey these fluorescents have got to go uh we have everybody there and pray tell it's just like girl you're so bougie this is a hospital calm down and she's like these flowers bring insects and she's already sick you know just being typical electra so another thing she brings to the attention is that the house is pretty much judgmental the council of the house and of the ballroom scene is very judgmental and that the film side and the people that were given the femininity and bringing that to the ballroom and sort of creating and molding this esque of the energy of the ballroom they only have three categories and everything else is going to you know uh, butch or vogue or all these other categories and not only that the judges are male 
And pray tell was like, okay, I can kind of see where you come from. And she's like, look, you've never walked in my heels. You have no idea if you're judging me, but you don't know what it takes to wear the things that we wear and do the things that we do. So how are you to give me a number and you don't know how to judge what's going on? So pray tell says, you know, you got a point. Let me speak to the council about this. We do need to make some changes. We then cut to Angel Another thing that I had correct in the predictions and saying that Angel would be clocked, unfortunately, because you got haters that want to stop your shine and the, the climb into getting where she wanted to go. And unfortunately, that is what happened. Someone from the ballroom scene recognized Angel at a casting or at a gig that she had and says, hey, you know, I really love the way that you do things. And you know, as a matter of fact, I used to love how you show face at the ballroom, kind of like, I know who you are. And of course they snitch to the person that has booked Angel. The word gets around and slowly and surely Angel recognizes that something isn't right. You know, if the secret is out, does everybody know? So she goes to the agency where Miss Ford is located and she just barges into the office. Whoever is in her office at the time, Miss Ford tells him, hey, let's go to another room. I want to talk with this person right now. I'll talk with you later. Angel sits down and Miss Ford lays it out. She says, look, when you came to me, I believed in you. I thought that you had this fire. And, you know, Angel, she's like, I do you know, it's something I always wanted to do. I don't understand. You know, Miss Ford is telling her, look, in the industry, people got upset because they're saying, hey, I wanted a girl. And now everybody knows your secret. And not only that, they've pulled your contracts. They've pulled the deals that we've worked out because they feel deceived. And Miss Ford doesn't give her the news in a very demeaning way, but she's telling her, hey, look, the industry isn't ready for you. The industry isn't ready for individuals that are going through this same journey. Pretty much as, as an I'm sorry, but what can Miss Ford do but just kind of give her the information about what's going on? And of course, Angel is devastated. In the hospital, Nurse Judy tells Blanca, look, your T cells are very low. I understand that you're trying to continue your career of doing nails, but there are things that you have to remember that you have to not let into your life so easily. Even the chemicals that you are using to do nails that you're inhaling is just disabling your body and it could be a threat to your healing. And Blanca's like, well, how else am I supposed to make money? She's like, look, you're a good candidate for disability. And Blanca's like, disability? I don't wanna hear it. I'm young, I'm in my early 30s. I don't wanna take disability. It's like, I'm just taking that as a, okay, let's give up. And Judy tells her, look, your disease, unfortunately, is in control. You have to understand that. It doesn't mean that it's the end, but you have to consider everything around you that may affect your health. So you might wanna put doing nails off to the side and think about other endeavors that may help not only you, but pay your bills and keep you safe. We then see Pray Tell, she visits, uh, he visits with Blanca and he's reading an excerpt, excerpt from the newspaper and he says, well, wow, look at this. Frederica, this is the real estate mogul, is in jail for arson. Not only does the fire department have evidence that it's arson, but firefighters got injured while putting out the fire. So she is in jail. She could face five to 10 years of being in prison. And, and Blanca says, look, I know I'm coming, my life is coming to an end and I know it's the end because now we have Frederica, she's in jail and that could be all handled. It cuts to Frederica in jail. She's telling a lawyer or somebody that's updating her about the case, like, look, I need to get out of here. He's like, look, you're a flight risk, okay? You are being charged with arson. And not only that, they have an eyewitness foreshadowing. They have an eyewitness of you committing arson to your estate. And Frederica goes into this spiel about, you know, I'm a woman and I feel, you know, that people are stopping this woman from being successful. And the only thing that I'm 
guilty of is stopping the potential career of a woman and stopping another woman foreshadowing for season three and she says look other than that i'm a mogul i need to get out of here these are people that have always stopped me from being great oh wow miss frederica are you experiencing <laughs> someone judging you have you experienced or been experiencing the same judgment and the same roadblocks and the same walls that a lot of other people are going through? Your battle and the category of your battle may not be the same thing that others are going through, but you're still running the race. And you're still, I think the writers wanted to show, you are still dealing with something that's preventing you from being great. Wow, Frederica, what a way to get humbled and learn your lesson, huh? We then have Pray Tell. He shares the information with the council about what Miss Electra was talking about. Like, hey, all of these categories that are super film, who are we to judge the super film categories when we're not feminine at all? And they're like, well, what are you talking about? They're like, look, we are judging really categories that we don't really understand. And another member of the council says, you know what? You have a point. So let's make light of it. And we walk in the ballroom in their heels, hence the title, in their heels, to understand where they're coming from, to see how much work goes into looking film and coming up with the looks and literally walking in heels. They're not super gung-ho about it, but they think that this is a lesson that everybody should, should see. And the attempts of walking in heels, or in other words, walking a journey in somebody else's shoes to see what it's like. They agree. And then we see Miss Electra. She has all of the counsel at her house. And we have members of House of Wintour, and she's trying to teach them how to walk, and Ricky, and Pray Tell, and everybody else. And they are having some trouble. Okay, they can't even stand straight in their heels. They're wobbling. They're all over the place or they're super stiff or they're going forward. They are a mess. And Electra says, hey, you guys, we need to get it together. Pray tell is really frustrating. He says, well, these heels are too tall and they're too this and they're too that. And Electra says, look, those shoes that you're in are nothing. That's what I wear when I have what the stomach flu or I can't get out of bed and I'm having just a little simple day. That's nothing. And they do a close up to see her six, seven inch heels compared to and a woman's everyday work shoe that she wears to work and he gets frustrated he takes off the heels and he storms out he goes outside and of course ricky follows him outside and pray tells look at, like look if you came to give me a little pep talk and to make it all better this ain't the time and ricky says look there's nothing wrong with showing the femininity that you have I was ashamed and, and confused at times about bringing out that side and thinking that I had to be so masculine and rough, knowing that I wanted to show that. And Pray Tell reflects on when he was a kid about how his father slowly and surely thought that hitting him or punching him would make him more quote unquote manly or if he could beat out the femininity. So he's always had this shell that Pray Tell is in and being a afraid to show that side and Ricky is saying look have fun with this let it come out and there's nothing wrong with it and pray tell gives that look of consideration like maybe you're right Poppy being the hustler that he is after learning the situation with Angel and that all of her work has been pulled from her now that people know her true identity within the modeling world he says look he printed out a whole bunch of cards, and Angel looks at it and is like, what's this? What's this supposed to be? What is, what are you doing? How is this going to help me, Poppy? And he's like, look, how about I be a manager or a talent scout to people in our community? How about I just put all the cards on the table? It's no secret. People know the situation, and they can hire at will. They can hire, and they can fire, but they'll know the truth coming out. And I'm looking at it like, wow, what a hustle mode idea. And he goes into it and he starts scouting and people think he's a pimp and people think he's lying. And Electra's like, look, why, why don't you sell things that people need? Why don't you sell insurance and Big Macs? <laughs> you know, Miss Electra, honey. She's like, look, good luck, Poppy. All right. So he then has the idea to go to Miss Ford with the agency. And he says, look, here's this idea. I can get talent 
based upon the truth. We can present this to people who are interested. If they want it, they want it. If they don't, they don't. There are no secrets. And Ms. Ford says, uh, it's an idea, but you got to understand the world we live in. I don't think anybody's ready. And he says, well, just give me a chance. She says, look, you got a phone and you got a desk and you got two weeks to find me some talent. And I'm thinking, okay, Poppy with the hustling. We have Damon, he's come back from Paris to see Blanca. And as he comes to see Blanca, she's at the point to where she's checking out of the hospital uh, by that time, but he's excited to see her. And she's saying, look, you didn't have to come all this way. And he's like, look, you're my mother. I was gonna come and see you. And they're catching up and he says, look, the tour went great. It went so well that not only do they want me back, but they want me to choreograph a video. And she's just so happy that her son is not only doing what he loves to do, but he's getting paid well and he's seeing the world. So she's so happy with that. And he's telling her, look, you come into the ballroom. We got something going on. And even Pray Tell says, look, we got something going up, uh, up and we have something planned so I need you to come and she's like I'm not going he's like look you need to go you need to be around people who love you we go to the ballroom scene and we have pray tell doing his thing and everybody's having so much fun and it kicks us back all the way to season one where we see everybody at their highest peak of excitement love and joy they're giving realness they're giving ballroom they're giving runway vogue all of these things during the ballroom scene and it gives us this boost of energy and happiness within the episode since we've seen so much tragedy and sadness with the episodes preceding. We move on to the category of mother of the year and the person who is awarded this great honor is Miss Electra. Wow, what growth <laughs> Miss Electra has shown from the beginning until now. She's learned her lessons more. She's more compassionate. She's helped people. She's extended her mother arms. She's become more involved. Definitely well deserved. And it went to Mother Electra. And you can see her humbleness. You can see her joy. She has learned a lot kudos and it was wonderful to see her win that category poppy and angel they have a moment at the ballroom he pulls angel to the side and says look miss force said i gotta sign one person and i did and she's like oh who was it who is it who did you get <laughs> he's like you and she's like well what do you mean me i mean it's a, it's already known what's going on with me he said look we booked something in berlin and they want you. And she was concerned about it. He says, look, they already know what's going on. They already know your truth. Like I told Ms. Ford, like I was telling you, my idea as management is to let certain gigs know your truth. So if they're booking you, they know the truth and what's going on. And they share a moment where he tells her, look, I'm here for you. I love you. Angel says she's never been with anybody like that. She proceeds to get down on one knee and then two knees. And Poppy was like, no, 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 don't. And Angel says, will you? He's like, wait, 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 let me, let me, let me get down here with you. And they both are down on their knees and they both know what they're about to say. And Angel says, well, let's say it at the same time. And they said, one, two, three, will you marry me? And they just hug each other. And I thought it was so beautiful. Everybody in the ballroom that was by the bar are all hugging them and giving them congratulations. So they had their moment. We then move to Candy's category where we have the lip syncing. And then we have Poppy, he goes up to the stage and he tells, whispers something to pray tell. And he stops for a beat and pray tell says, hey, whoever was about to perform, we're about to let this person perform first. So you'll have your moment, but this person was out on leave. They weren't feeling too well. They're here now and they are ready to perform. We then see Miss Blanca. Now, when I tell you this scene had me in tears because it was so beautiful. You had two things of memory going on at the same time. You hear the drum roll and the cymbals and immediate, immediately you know this is Whitney Houston's rendition of the National Anthem. And we have Blanca beat in her wheelchair with the signature Whitney wig. 
and she begins to lip sync to that Whitney Houston and I thought oh y'all not gonna get me y'all about to get me y'all are killing me with Whitney then you start rem remembering Whitney Houston's legacy and that amazing voice and Blanca's character lip syncing to this wonderful rendition not only that she musters up enough energy to pull off her role and shows this wonderful outfit as she hits the crescendo of the national anthem and she is singing and serving and everybody is crying foreshadowing foreshadowing y'all <laughs> for season three they are still still believe setting us up for a really really big fall but anywho moving on and she gives this wonderful performance and they got me with that Whitney Houston and they did a wonderful job with that writing. So the last category of that night, which I thought was beautiful and so very well written, we have Electra. She's at the host mic that Pray Tell usually stands, where he usually stands. And she gets up there and she says, look, tonight we have a special category. The council is going to walk in our heels. They are going to see what it's like to not only literally be in our heels, but to be happy and to be free and to express their femme side and to show their femininity. And before we get started, let me call out the judges. And she starts to call out certain judges to come on that stage. She calls that, she calls out Lulu, come judge for me. <laughs> come judge for me, yes. Blanca, come judge for me. <laughs> come judge for me. <laughs> Yes, daughter. I thought it was so adorable and so cute. <laughs> Ebony, come just for me. Yes, come just for me. And they're bringing them up and they're sitting them down. I said, oh, this is about to be off the chain. <laughs> so they get all of the judges to sit down. And one by one, we have Ricky come out, which was adorable, which was just so cute in film. And then we have other people of the council. They're trying. They dress as, uh, as the dream girls, honey. And Miss Electra is just clowning like, oh, she must be the... <laughs> She must be the Effie of the group. Or she must be this. And ooh, look at her walk, trying to walk in these hills. I thought it was beautiful and hilarious at the same time. They save Pray Tell for the end. And you can tell he's very timid and very afraid. But he's trying. And he has this Diana Ross-esque look that is absolutely adorable. And he's slowly coming down the ballroom floor. You can tell he's trying, but he's enjoying it. He's smiling and he's having fun and he tries to give a little twirl and everybody's like, okay, pray tell, do it. And Miss Electra says on the mic, she says, look, let's give a round of applause for everybody that, that tried for this category because the whole point was to walk in each other's heels. And I know you guys tried, it might not have been the best, but we wanted to show you all that this is what you should do in life. And wow, only to think if the world were this way. And it was very beautiful. And they embraced each other and they said, give them a round of applause. And they still gave their scores and all their goodness and pray tell. Almost got all tens. But then we had somebody with a card <laughs> of revenge that gave him a nine and said, uh, look, it's revenge, like, boo. I mean, when you gave me that nine, you know, it's cold-hearted, but boo and pray tell was just like, girl, whatever, girl, bye. <laughs> so a wonderful moment, wonderful, so well written. I love how they let us see pray tell finally get his moment without being afraid, thinking about how his father used to treat him and finally being able not to feel guilty and to have a little fun with it and to finally take it up several notches and experiencing putting on a dress and a wig because remember it was something that he wanted to do and that he tried to do but he never felt comfortable with it because he had his father in the back of his head. 
The final scene, we have Blanca. She's outside and she's in her wheelchair and she's waiting on Pray Tell to come out. But while she's waiting on Pray Tell, she sees Poppy and Angel and they're telling her the good news that they're engaged. And she's like, that's good. Make sure you send me a postcard and don't forget about me. They're on their way to go get pancakes. Blanca's like, just go ahead, have your pancakes, baby. Pray Tell, gonna take me home. Tonight wore me out, have fun. They leave. And as they leave Blanca, she sees two kids, two preteens, and, you know, looks like they're trying to pick something off of the ground to eat or look at. And she says, hey, what are y'all doing? You know, come over here. And they come over, and you can tell that they're on the streets. You know, they're dirty. You can tell that they're tired. You can tell that they don't have a home to go to, and Blanca quickly sets sight on that and wants to help them. One is very standoffish and kind of afraid, and the other one speaks for the other child. So we have Quincy and Chili. We learned that they're their names. And Blanca says, we know, where are you from? I think they said they were from Denver, but they met each other on the pier. So they've come a long way as kids and they're without a home. And Blanca says, well, you know, have you eaten anything? And they're telling her no. Seeing this cycle of helping someone and children, quote unquote, being invited to a house and chilly. She's very tall and beautiful. And she says, hey, you know, I would love to, you know, be around you. And she says, hey, you see this trophy? I can show you how to get that. And they're really excited because they can automatically tell that this is a welcoming heart. It's very welcoming. This person is not judging them that Blanca is coming from a place of just wanting them to be okay. And Pray Tell walks out and he says, oh, you know, what do we have here? And she says, well, this is Quincy and Chili. And we were just talking. And he says, hey, are you hungry? And they're having small talk and they're walking off talking about what do you want to eat? And it fades out of that scene, showing us that cycle that even though Blanca is in her situation, that she still has those helping hands and pray tell still has those helping hands as well and they just want to make sure that they're okay not thinking about what tomorrow brings their health or anything all thinking about the kids all thinking about their homes and how they can help everybody else and the episode ends so as many of you know in the other reviews i said that it's foreshadowing 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 setting us up to watch a fall and I still think that that's going to happen. I thought it was beautiful that the writers gave us some crescendo of happiness and joy in the midst of all of the sadness. Because, wow, what a way to kind of have a season finale with just down, down, down. Which they could have done. It's still a lot of foreshadowing in this. A crescendo of giving us hope of what can happen. But then again, we have to be realistic and what is really going on. It's hope of Frederica helping Blanca with her situation, with her real estate, and maybe helping her be better, but is it too late for that? Is it something that friend, uh, that uh, Frederica will learn in the future, her wrongdoings and how she's treated people? Will this be foreshadowing and it going to somebody else? Because you gotta think of Blanca's health, you gotta think of Pray Tell's health, unfortunately, and also, we got to take care of Mr. Ricky and a lot of other people who are dealing with the same situation. We see the hope of Damon and his career. We see the hope of Angel. But at the same time, we have that lingering, lingering thing of our drugs still involved. Are these dangers still lingering over the heads of Poppy? and angel because they're still going to be in that industry and we still have to get over the fact that this independence can they carry that on for a long period of time my predictions for season three i still think it's a big setup for the fall but i think the writers wanted us to have something to uplift the audience and what they did with this episode was exactly that giving us that energy giving us that hope and not seeing the characters in this downer downer situations all the time seeing the hard work from season one all the way up until now the blood sweat and the tears 
and the constant downs of all these characters having fun times with one another, but we're actually seeing success through all of the sacrifices. So season three, of course, like I said before, it has to be this rotation of new characters because even though we have other series where they keep the same characters for eight, nine, ten seasons, which is okay, but we have this endeavor with health concerns. We have this endeavor with the discrimination within that community that we still have to deal with. We still got the haters that are pulling them back from all of that success. We still have the dead body in Miss Electra's closet, literally, that is decomposing. What does that mean for Miss Electra? So with this writing, to help you understand, it gives us so much positivity and we're seeing so much success that we are forgetting about the problems that are still remaining life, realistically seeing what's going on. We still got the body that's decomposing in Miss Electra's closet. Did you forget about that? We still have the situation, of, like I said, about the health with Praetel, Blanca, and Ricky. Because like Nurse Judy said, it's unpredictable. You could feel absolutely fine one moment, and then the next day it'd be something completely different. Foreshadowing to new characters, foreshadowing to a big fall, and foreshadowing to demons and things that are still remaining and hovering over heads. And with Frederica, once she realizes her error and tries to help, will it be too late? Well, unfortunately, Miss Blanca already be gone. I look forward to season three. I give good kudos and big praise to Billy Porter. I hope he wins the Emmy. He is in a category with a lot of heavy hitters. So it's going to be a great comp competition fighting for that category for that Emmy. But I'm just really excited that he was nominated and that they recognized his talent. But once again, this is not his first rodeo. He has always been in it to win it, has won several awards, not only with Broadway, but with writing and executive producing. So I look forward to it. And I'm so happy that they've exposed this world to many people that are unaware about their community and about the discriminations and the struggles. I wish them all the best. So we have another show that has ended. We have The Handmaid's Tale that I was reviewing that ended and posed with the season finale. And like I said, when one show ends, another one will take its place. I will give the announcement on the other shows that will take its place. In the meantime, stay posted with the other shows that are coming to an end as well. Queen Sugar. And we also have some more reviews on trips and different endeavors that I have going on that I will share with you very soon. But I want to keep you guys posted. Keep in mind with Pose Season 3, the goal is to keep it a television show. To wrap it up all in one big bowl and just season two wouldn't be good and it would feel very, very rushed. I don't see this series going any further than a maybe season three, maximum season four. The writers and the producers of this show did say that they wanted this show to come to an end soon. So I don't know what that means, but if you think about the evolution of the show, it really wouldn't make much sense to take it past a season four. Uh, that would just be pushing it too far because a lot of these stories they've taken from real people, uh, things that have really happened that they've condensed for a television show. So taking it to a season three, maximum season four would make the most sense. So that that's those are my predictions for season three. And I haven't been wrong since. <laughs> Everything that I predicted has been right. I've enjoyed this journey with you for season two of Pose. Look forward to other shows. Subscribe, you guys, subscribe. Remember, I subscribe to anybody who subscribes to me. Comment, share, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. I'll see y'all later. I love you. Bye.